How much turbo boost does an OM617 engine actually make? I had a really great question from one of my subscribers not that long ago and um, he was asking me how much boost the OM617.950, 951, and 952 make. And there are two turbos that were used on these cars, the Garrett Turbo and the Triple K Turbo. And we're going to talk about both of these turbos and what their pros and cons are and how efficient they are. So the First of all, the Mercedes diesel engines were all designed to run at a maximum boost of one bar, which is sort of like 15 PSI, but actually in, in reality, Mercedes said something like uh, 1.1 bar, which is about 16 PSI, was going to be the governed maximum boost before the overboost valve kicks in and starts dumping boost. And the wastegates on most of these are relegated to about 16 uh, PSI, but may open sooner. So we're going to use PSI in this video just because I can make more minute calculations like 15, 14, etc., etc. So if you take a Garrett turbocharger on an OM617 and rebuild the turbo with a new impeller so that all of your wear and there trust me from all the carbon particles that your exhaust shoots out the impellers and these things do wear you will usually see boost numbers in the neighborhood of 11 psi or 12 psi which is usually about 0 0.6 0 0.7 bar most of the time when these turbos have some wear and tear on them you see boost in the neighborhood of 0.5 bar maybe 0.6 bar and that's after about 250,000 miles. I remember when I worked on my friend Greg's 300D and we decided to rebuild his turbo just to see what the effect would be. It turned out that the turbocharger produced enough extra boost to give us about two more miles per gallon and to get us off the line about one second faster and on top of that, it allowed the uh, it allowed the engine to have faster acceleration from like 40 to 70 miles per hour while getting better fuel economy. And this was because the turbo was working more efficiently. Now, some turbos are better than others. Not all turbos are created equal. For so they did something with the 85 model year turbos besides that little bypass valve on the side that some people say was meant just to draw EGR in but may have actually been sort of like akin to an early tumble flap that caused the air to tumble going through the intake giving a little bit better boost characteristic at low rpm and I still maintain that that's most likely true. Uh, the problem that we've observed with some of the early Garrett turbos like if you have a 617950 on a 78, 79, or 80, 300 SD, we find that the impellers were more susceptible to wear. And a lot of these engines don't make the power they did when they were new because of impeller wear. In 81 and 82, this started to get better, but I think that really the, the biggest improvement on these cars was the advent of the Triple K Turbo. And then uh, this is, most of the time you saw Triple K Turbos about midway through 83 into 1984 and the triple k turbos tend to go a lot further and faster without rebuilding 85 model year garrett turbos seem to be really good i don't seem to have any issues with them but uh they still produce less to boost than a, kip, a triple k a triple k has an adjustable wastegate and actually is designed well enough to get all 15 or 16 psi's out of the turbo you can get a genuine one bar of boost out of a triple k it's totally possible and you will find that there is a consummate increase in performance with these engines even if you have like a 300,000 mile triple k turbo versus a i don't know a 150,000 mile garrett turbo you'll find that the triple k turbo boosts better and more effectively the Garrett turbos do not have adjustable wastegates, and we've also found that their wastegate 
springs actually don't trip at 16 PSI. They trip at something like 12 or 13. So you're missing a couple of PSI. We'll say it trips at 0.75 bar for those of you using the metric system instead of a full bar, a 1.1 bar, meaning that you are losing some boost. This also means though that you're less likely to cook your engine to death. Although running a stock turbo, we have not found any 617 engines that have melted inside. So theoretically, we think that these engines in stock form would probably be able to run at something like one and a half bar before there was an issue. And as a matter of fact, if you look at the C111 for um, diesel test car, the boost factor on that was like at 1.8 or 1.9, correct me if I'm wrong. It was just very high. And that's how the cars were able to run at 190 miles an hour getting about 16 miles per gallon. If you don't want your engine to melt, you have to give it more fuel. And so after about one bar, the engines start to be so inefficient that they can't really produce fuel economy like a diesel engine should. Then it goes from like a great economy engine to a crappy performance engine. And um, I know some people try to do that with the 617, but I just think if you want a fast car, you get a Subaru or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, if you found this video to be useful and helpful and informative, please like, share, and subscribe. Tap the bell for notifications. And um, if you do choose to explore boost on your 300D or similar car, or 300SD, just remember that less boost doesn't hurt engines. Too much boost can. So these engines will run forever at 10 or 11 PSI of boost. See you guys later and thank you for watching.